Hi everybody, this is Gil. Thank you for watching. So we are posting two videos about Rings of Power, the Lord of the Rings show, season two. Each of them about a different aspect about the show, okay, that we think runs deep. So this is the first video and it will be about the unpeaceful transfer of power in the show in this second season. Everywhere in Middle Earth and beyond, we see bad leaders who are not willing to relinquish power. Hmm. Seems pretty relevant. Okay, so that's what we'll talk about in this video. And in the next one, we'll talk about how evil in Rings of Power, okay, is basically fascism. Each period has its own evil. This is the evil of our time. So that's in the next video. In this one, we'll deal with one of the most relevant and important issues of our time, okay, the transfer of power. As usual, we'll compare the show to history and obviously to present day. Mm. Okay, enjoy. Hi, everybody. Hello, Rutger. Hi, Gail. Hi, everybody. Good to see hey, you. Good to see you. Good to see you. So we wanted to divide uh, our view on fascism and, our, and how this show looks at what is going on now into two conversations. The first one is about the un- peaceful transfer of power, unpeaceful transfer of power, a recurring event throughout the season in all of the different locations. And then we'll talk about how it portrays fascism in general. So the unpeaceful transfer of power. Autre, first thoughts when you look at the show, at the season, through that prism. Have you gone mad? The whole world's gone mad, my son. But it is to us. Father, take off the ring. I will not. It is mine. It belongs to me. Whenever there's an unconstitutional transfer of power, there's a problem. The Roman Republic, right, existed for, mm -hmm. well, five centuries. Yeah. yeah. And they had this whole mentality of, well, you can't have kings, kings suck. And so we just have like these consuls and gradually the system had grown to such an extent and the power bases of the different rich people had changed to such an extent that it was going to mutate into something else. Um, but the, the system doesn't allow it, right? Sort of the constitution, if you will, doesn't allow mm -hmm. it. So there's a lot of fakery, right? So then, oh, no, I'm just a consul, don't worry. And I think a lot of the times when the system is broken down and it mutates into something else, you get these play on words to try to hide that now it's moving authoritarian. And so, no, I'm just I'm just the leader, but I'm just like any everybody else. Of course, of and you know, I'm just working really hard and don't worry. And yeah, I will protect the, the Constitution. I will protect free speech. Of uh, course. Actually, actually, uh, you just you need a strong person now, actually, yeah, yeah. to keep things the way they are different, yes. but the way they are, but yes. different. Y but, yeah, you know, Sauron says, and I quote, Who are you? Truly. I am the one keeping the storm at bay. Of this course. classic fascist propaganda talking point. There's a storm outside. You need me. You need yes. me. I'm just, it's, it's, don't worry. Don't worry. I'm here. Everything will just be normal. Just go home. I'm here. Don't <laughs> exactly. worry. Exactly. And I have a weird blonde wig for the entire show. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fascist. I just, I just have a blonde, a weird blonde wig. I, I just have, mm -hmm. I have weird hair. I might have weird facial hair, weird little mustache, or whatever. <laughs> just don't, don't notice that. That's exactly nothing. Exactly, it's just exactly. a look. So basically, in every location, let's go over the location and see how they deal with when they have basically new elements that change the nature of power and then basically creates a constitutional crisis in each and every place. And then there is a question, how do we, how do we replace this leader? <laughs> There's a leader that we don't want, does a bad job. How do we do it? It's a big problem. By mm -hmm. the way, in the US, you have to wait four years. That's uh, kind of insane. And uh, in Israel, you have to wait for the government to collapse itself 
and it usually happens but you know when the collapsing is more dangerous uh, than keeping in power then you you know you just keep the power endlessly so i feel like this is a very very relevant topic today mm -hmm. how do we move power from one person to another person so mm -hmm. let's start with the with the dwarves there it's very clear the king suddenly has new powers the mm -hmm. ring does a very bad job it's going mad okay what do you do what do you do how do you transfer power well like in monarchies you also have kind of a constitutional order again not really written down but in europe since for the last 1500 years you had the, okay you have monarchies and they follow the salic laws uh, which is mm. like way back from the franks um, and those are interpreted a little bit differently, which is why Luxembourg is no longer Dutch possession because they had this rule. It always has to be a boy. Like you can oh. rule the country if you have a penis. Otherwise, no. Oh, yeah. um, One day, though, you will get it back. One day you will get it back. It's not that long ago. It could still come back in the bosom. Oh, it's fine. Oh. <laughs> and, and then in Holland, you could have queens. Um, but in any case so there's sort of this implied like okay somebody else is in line and by some rules and that at least that helps a lot right because if you don't have that written down then every time the king dies it's a mess right so you have to have some kind of rule for that and of course it also really helps if actually the king consciously knowingly transfers the power and if the next one has sort of the mandate of heaven let's say and that's kind of happening here it's very yeah, heroic with the, at the, yeah, end, with the, at the very very end right yeah he actually transfers the power by jumping into the abyss whatever symbolic yes right? but and the problem of king, course is king, that... you're the king now right he calls him king yes and that's that's what's needed and that's really difficult because the king difficult. is is one person and they can go insane which happens many times here too and now what do you do like that dude's not leaving <laughs> and he's and you, it's a problem you know we just had it like in the us they just had it with biden yeah exactly. everybody was dependent on this one dude saying you know what i quit but mm -hmm. if he hadn't said that things would have been much worse they could still get worse no. but that was kind of so weird it's like this uh you know remnant from antiquity that everybody has to wait and see what the person with the power he holds the metaphorical and physical ring now we have to well oh, please what do you say what do you say can we survive please please uh, and that's so they have to plot in the show to basically get the king to willingly uh, give up power or uh, you know a coup kill your own father or something right. like that to save the republic to save the people yeah but then you also depend on his son being brave enough to do it woo, 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 woo. it's very very difficult today still if someone is does not relinquish power it's very difficult to remove them yeah it's a problem and it's, it's a big problem and like and I think it, at least in the us it's only power. four years but of course in many places this happens all the time right like the previous a king of Saudi Arabia was already so far gone that he was like shitting the bathtub and everything. <laughs> and um, right, and then his nephew took power. Right, his yes. nephew took power. Yeah, was yeah, it yeah. even his son? I think. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Right. Yeah. So we have, there's, and there's many nephews also, right? So there was many nephews. nephews. Yeah, 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 and yeah. they were imprisoned. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for yeah. corruption because of corruption. Okay, which and otherwise never we, happens in Saudi. No, oh, no, 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 no. The other guy is not doing that. No, no, no they don't. The good do nephew. He's the good nephew. The one that yeah. cuts people up is the good nephew, right? Sauce, it, sauce with the sauce. Right? So I think it's not an, an accident. We should say it, that the second season of the show now coming out right before the American elections has this running theme of transfer of power. We have the same thing with Numenor, right? Mm -hmm. The kingdom beyond the sea. There's a queen. You call her blind Kamala Harris. Mm -hmm. And then her cousin, he wants to take power. So he has to manipulate and do all kinds of uh, shenanigans in order for it to be palatable politically to transfer the power from her to him. And then she wants to retransfer the power 
to herself. So now there's like a rebellion, a slow simmering, rebe- like really, really the beginning of the of a of a rebellion. So this is also the theme over there. So tra- mm-hmm. you transfer her power over there by you touched it earlier, the mandate of heaven, right, with the mm-hmm. bird coming in. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the mandate of heaven is a Chinese concept. Um, and it, I mean, that's all like that's there's some sense to that, right? I mean, China has mostly been imperial, so mm-hmm. you have the, the guy who sits there uh, the whole time and won't leave. Uh, but there is some sort of you know, not really enshrined in law, but there's some sort of like if things really go to shit, right? Then the emperor must have lost the mandate of heaven right. and then somebody else might gain it. And so there's like, it's oh. it's kind of a release valve for if there's like severe right. crisis, you could argue, well, actually this means that the mandate of heaven was lost and it needs to be transferred to somebody else. Wow. Which is kind I, of sensible, right? It's super, super sensible. Like we, like we need that, okay? Because yeah. today a crisis under your watch doesn't really mean that it's your fault. No, stay the course. Yeah, stick with uh, the stay the course. Oh, the, and the crisis is because of the people who are not in power. Mm-hmm. Of course. Or if it weren't for me, the crisis would have been uh, 100 times uh, worse. That's what we are being told right now. That mm-hmm. oh, if it weren't for me, it would have been one. Oh, if the opposition were in power when this happened, yeah, 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 we wouldn't have 2,000 people die. We would have... 4,000 people died. So actually, he saved us. Yes. So the mandate of heaven um, to replace uh, the government, uh, Mm -hmm. that's somehow more sensible and that works better than liberal democracy, where you have all these institutions and like rules that did not anticipate people not wanting to relinquish power peacefully <laughs> we just assumed ah, of course everybody will relinquish power peacefully because that's how we've been doing it for 50 100 200 years depends on the country but one person can change it and it's very difficult to to to, to deal with it because if you have the power you have the power <laughs> yeah. you can use the power to keep the yeah. power but but the, the the world of the humans here in the series it's it's kind of tricky it's i mean it's i think that's called a crowned republic so it's kind of like a political system but also with a kind of nobility and so then it's kind of the worst of both worlds in a way like it's a bit for example how venice functioned with the doge like it's a republic but not really and actually, the right. Dutch Republic was kind of like that too, right? So, like, like officially, it was a republic, and it was like mer- meritocracy. Just by happenstance, the oranges were always in charge. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So it's only a little bit worse than today. Actually, the only person who actually ostensibly cares about his people and tries to govern on behalf of them and look after his interests is the guy from the orcs. Exactly. With the, the orc families the and the orc babies. And oh, should we really exactly. do this or not? That's exactly. And I think the show is telling us he's the best guy <laughs> of the all. Yeah. yeah. He, first of all, takes off the ring. He yeah. sacrifices himself, like the like blind Kamala Harris. She also sacrificed herself mm-hmm. for, for the cause. She jumped into the water and then the animals spared her. His animals, Atar, they did not spare him. He's kind of like maybe an old school Republican. <laughs> really. Like he's really, he's tough and he was jingoistic and he wants to go to war. But when he sees an opportunity to, you know, uh, cut uh, peace deals, you can see, you know, l- l- look at uh, Mordor as the shining city on the hill. <laughs> and he's like, oh, we will have peace with the elves. And then he gets stabbed uh, Caesar style. And the Republic turns into an empire. He's the Caesar where, but you know, a good Caesar, not uh, the actual Caesar. Yeah, very sad. And with the old school Republicans, taxes were also lower. So that's also a problem. (laughs) Exactly. So the transfer of power over there is through assassination. That's the way that you, the, that the tra- you transfer power with the orcs. You have to assassinate the old guy. There is no other way to do it. Well, and you, you have know, to have his guys assassinate him. It's brutal to say it, but sometimes it's the only <gasps> way to get rid of certain people. 
<gasps> no. In, in, in this <laughs> week, wake up. in this week, we might say that sometimes there's really bad people, and there's only really one solution. Uh, you know that uh, <laughs> a couple of days ago they sent uh, a drone to the house of our dear leader, and they actually hit the house and, and caused d damage to the house. Sure. Yeah. The, so the Iranians, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not saying that I wish that he was in the house and that they hit him and killed him. Of course, because he's a person, and like any person, even if you are a horrible person who is responsible for suffering for one hundred, hundreds and thousands of people, and possibly millions and millions of people, and you just destroy everything around you, that doesn't mean that I wanted him killed. It doesn't mean that I would have uh, shed a tear had he been killed. But killing and assassinating is wrong, even if it's very, very, very bad people. So at least we can, you know, in the show, <laughs> we can support it because violence against uh, fascists is wrong, I guess. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> so, I don't know. Let's no. leave it to everybody to, to decide <laughs> for themselves. Ah, fascism. Fascism has many names, but that's uh, for the next uh, for the next one. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think about the elves? The elves, they are the only ones who do not even. Ah, there is one transfer of power from Celebrimbo to Sauron. Yeah, right. Yeah. Through manipulation, manipulation and, manipulation. and making people yeah. think that uh, this the guy with the funny blonde wig hair. He actually represents uh, the other guy with the funny blonde uh, hair. Calabrimbor is in a bubble and he doesn't know what's going on uh, around him. Uh, that sometimes happens. <laughs> that sometimes happens, right. <laughs> Did you... Uh, uh, so when uh, Franco uh, in Spain, he, I mean, he was in charge for... Well, let's see. So Spanish Civil War was like... In the mid 1930s, I they got rid of him yeah. in the 70s. In the 70s so it's 40 yeah, years. Five or something. Yeah. And by the end, he was so out of it, but he was still in charge. So they made like special newspapers and stuff for him. Like, oh no, it's all going great. Here's your newspaper. Here's El Pais or whatever. <laughs> no, no, no. That's actually. And they were just waiting idea. for him to die. And there, there was all there on, back when Saturday Night Live was still funny. They also had like a, a thing of like every week they checked if Franco is still alive. Um, yeah. And then in the end, he wasn't. And then and freedom yeah, reigned. Uh, but uh, until that, I mean, there was not a good system to like constitutionally get rid of him. So they just had to wait it out and kind of fake it. So he doesn't do any funny stuff. So no, we're all on course. It's great. Please die. <laughs> so this is interesting. This is like has been a, a, a problem for human societies since we had one person in charge of everything immediately the question is what if i don't like that person and that person doesn't like me and that person is doing a lot of uh, damage how do we change that and there is we haven't found a good way to do it mm -hmm. so this is like a, it's it's interesting to have it in a legend because right legends are supposedly are supposed to be about like eternal human problems right but and this problem was solved is this, this problem was solved already by the Greek city-states, and we need to bring that back. You know the term to ostracize, right? To ostracize. And that comes from the Greek word ostrakon, which is just a shard from a pottery. Oh. So they had also unelections, <laughs> where you could, like, you carve on a pot shard, who needs to get the fuck out? Um, right. And then we can't devote. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever you loses needs to get the fuck out. You know, you know why it's good? a great system. Because, <laughs> because that means that even if you have a strong base that mm -hmm. never wavers, whatever happens, if you are very, very unpopular, you will be ostracized. Because, yeah. it, you know, 50% plus one, that's enough. And all these assholes, they manipulate the systems in order to stay in power, but they're not actually popular. Yeah. So it's just hard to transfer the power. But if we could just like vote, as you said, who, if in Israel there's a vote, who gets booted out every year? Obviously, all these guys in a few years, none of them will be there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Clearly, this is a much more important aspect of elections, like who do, how do you get rid of people? Because Why? now, especially like at, at some point, oh, the man. system optimizes to this highly tweaked and gerrymandered kind of 
thing that no longer really reflects yeah. the actual opinion about, but, I mean, look at the US elections, okay? Um, both of these candidates are terrible. Yeah, right. One of them is like a normal person, but uh, terrible oh, no. as a politician. Not good. Uh, not, <sighs> she's not good at, like, at politicking. I don't know. Maybe she'll be good at ruling, but I feel like, you know, timidity. The system forces you to be timid and careful and not rock the boat because the system doesn't want to be rocked just like as, you know, as a being. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like, yeah. it would have been great to vote out Biden, vote out Kamala. And it, you know, it, it, at some point, a sensible and competent person is still standing. And okay, they get the job, but at least yeah. we got rid of the bad ones. I think first you just get rid of Trump. That's the first guy that you need to get rid of. So, like in Israel, the first guy to be like that, you know, obviously more than fifty percent would vote to ostracize would be Bibi, and that immediately will open a window into like, for positive change. But it's just like impossible because the system. The way it is, you just like cannot get rid of him unless you know his wife murders him or something. It's totally nailed down with all the coalition building, and like that just happens in so many democracies. And actually, that gridlock, gridlock is one of the things that drives this. Oh, we need a clean sweep, and we'll bring in somebody else, and well, they'll stay the same, but different, but the same, but different. Uh, rise of fascism, and nobody right. We'll we'll veer uh, into that in a moment. And like when people say, I remember, like I, I I began to remember that a few years ago, I had uh, a few friends who used to say, "Oh, we need fascists to come in and clean up," and like nobody who says that thinks that they'll be <laughs> cleaned up themselves. They're like, oh, no, other people will be cleaned up. No, no, I'll be fine. But what happens if the fascist doesn't like you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or your profession or mm -hmm. your group okay then you're gonna go bye bye so it's it's kind of this uh okay let's uh let's uh, veer into the rise of fascism there's a lot uh, to talk about so if you're watching this on youtube that's in the next uh, video so stay tuned in a couple of days i hope you enjoyed this video okay the next one will be about how rings of power portrays Evil. The evil of our time is fascism, so Sauron in the show ushers in fascism. <laughs> so thank you for watching. I want to thank the members for supporting our work on patreon.com slash ADOF. Okay, our podcast is called As Depicted on Film. And I have another podcast about ancient history called A Podcast of Biblical Proportions. Check it out. Both are available on all podcasting platforms. Okay, so we'll see you soon in a few days. Bye.